We've been playing the Vessel of Hatred expansion now since Monday, and after beating the story, I can't help but think about what's next to come and what the ending really meant. In this video, we're going to dive into what the story beats of Vessel of Hatred set up for what's next in the Diablo series. This includes the most likely next class, the whereabouts of Lorath as well as Tyrael, and the inevitable arrival of all three of the prime evils. Note that we will be discussing the ending of the Vessel of Hatred campaign so if you haven't gotten there yet and want to avoid spoilers, continue at your own discretion. First off, let's talk about the next possible class. So there are four big pieces here that give us a strong hint as to what the next class is going to be. And that hint points to a holy heavy armor class, most likely part of the Zaka room, although it could be part of the Cathedral of Light. We'll talk about potential tie-ins in the game as well as player demand. First off, of the holy classes that we know in the Diablo series, the two that are most prominent are are the Paladin from Diablo 2, as well as the Crusader from Diablo 3. The two have something very similar in common, and that they were both members of the Zacharum Church. Now, in Vessel of Hatred, two central themes are constantly brought up. One, the corruption of hatred, which is Mephisto's influence, and two, is Akarat and the search for his tomb. So with Mephisto, Mephisto was the one who originally corrupted the capital of the Zacharum faith from the Traven called, corrupting the High Council, the highest figure, the Kehagen, who was known as Sankakor, whose tomb we dived into in Season 5, and then using the High Council to use a compelling orb to corrupt everyone that's part of the faith in Kuros and Diablo 2. Now, Diablo 4 takes place 50 years after Diablo 3, and Diablo 3 takes place 20 years after Diablo 2, so that's 70 years since Mephisto corrupted the Zacharum Church. Now, although at this point, the Paladin Order is more or less defunct, and the ones that are existing were absorbed into the Night Guards of Westmarch over in the Western Continent, we do get to see the remnant of the Crusaders in Zarbanzet, and they are front and center of Season 6's theme, which is Hatred Rising. And although they're beaten, battered, bruised, and were directionless in Zarbanzet, the rising hatred of Mephisto Fisto gives them a calling and purpose once more. And when you do have conversations with them in town, they fret about not being able to find Zacharum's tomb, which was their original charge back in Diablo 3. Speaking of Akirat's tomb, no big spoilers for the campaign here, we do discover an in-vessel of hatred, and not only that, but Mephisto, just like he claimed the head of the Zacharum church before with the Kehaga and Sagakor, now claimed the body of Akarat, which essentially is going to develop an antichrist-like arc. Mephisto steals Akarat's body and uses it as the vessel of hatred, implanting his soul stone so he could now possess the corpse of the grand worship leader, essentially leading us into the equivalent of an antichrist arc for Mephisto's next step. Now, I imagine that the existing Zacharum, which in this case is just the Crusaders, are not going to be too happy about that. So it's very possible for us to see a potential crusader class or a light bearing heavy armor class fighting back against Mephisto desecrating the Akarat they worship for their entire existence. I can't imagine of a better class to take up arms against Mephisto then. Also moving aside from the Decarum Church, another prominent figure is the Cathedral of Light. And especially with the group of burned knights, they realized Inarius for what he was, calling him a mad angel and believing the church to be fools for marching down into hell following him. In fact, they even bring up that angels are no better than demons in not giving a shit about humanity. And we actually hear that from the horse's mouth during this side quest out of Nahantu. You and I, a wanderer? There was no greater horror than when heaven stood silent as Inarius was butchered. You must know the tale well. How could they abandon him? I cried. How dare they abandon us? We followed a mad angel into hell, prepared to end the eternal conflict. 
But angels know only contempt for humanity. And so we were permitted only to fail. Now I am a man beyond the lies of faith. Beyond the promises of vain angels. When you triumph here, burn it all down. See, nothing is left. Swear it. I swear. So whether it's going to be a member of the Cathedral of Light or the existing scattered Zacharum orders like the Crusaders, I highly believe that a Holy Baron class will be the one that's next. Also, the leadership of Diablo, including Rod Ferguson himself, they know how badly the player base wants a heavy armor Holy class. The classic classes to come back as well. Okay? Not like a Paladin or something? I've never paladin, heard that. Paladin. Have you heard that people I'm, want a Paladin? I'm unfamiliar with this feedback. <laughs> Now, his response was that although he understands the player demand, it has to make sense with the narrative they're going through in the DLC, which is why when we went back to the jungle of Nahantu, they went with the spirit form, which is more of a jungle themed class. But I believe that if the next step is indeed to confront Mephisto in the body of Akarat, that more than justifies the existence of a holy class. Now, another glaring gap in the expansion was the Laura, with the old sagely figure being replaced by the Nahantu's equivalent of Eru. So where exactly was Laura during all this time? Well, if you read the Book of Lorath here, which takes place right after the events of Diablo 4, Lorath is off globetrotting, collecting powerful relics to safekeep and chronicling their secrets for Nairel to inherit in the future, not to mention being on the lookout for Nairel herself. One other huge piece that we uncovered when we head back to the Herodric Vault is a burnt note from Lorath himself, which appears to be him trying to get in contact contact with Tyrael. Bringing up the note, Lorath says, I must have failed him. Why else won't he answer? He must be out there somewhere. Perhaps one day, Tyrael. One day. So Lorath is clearly trying to reach out to Tyrael here, which gives us a good hint that Tyrael must still be out there. Now the angels, and particularly Tyrael, have only gotten involved when the prime evils emerge onto Sanctuary. With Mephisto now clearly in half inhabiting Akarat of all vessels, this would be quite the nudge to get Tyrael as well as other angels back into the playing field. Another potential pivot too that we can see is that during Vessel of Hatred's expansion, it is clear that the Wanderer that you're playing is powerful, but not as powerful as say the Nephilim from Diablo 3. And the reason being is the Nephilim Diablo 3 was able to destroy Diablo and Heals, which was the prime evil of all the power of the seven evils of hell congregated into one form. And in Vessel of Hatred, you defeat the Herald of Mephisto, which is considered a small sliver of Mephisto's strength by Nairal. So if this small sliver took so much effort that even Akarat himself had to sacrifice his eternal soul to take down Mephisto's herald, how is the Wanderer going to be able to topple Mephisto? Now Mephisto's herald did say something interesting during the confrontational with the Wanderer, claiming that very few individuals outside of our Wanderer is worthy of the birthright. So I am curious to see if there there will be an arc, maybe as part of the next expansion, before we confront Mephisto to awaken more dormant Nephilim powers. I mean, why else is our Wanderer able to survive Lilith's blood up to this point when many others fell to her corruption? Now, in terms of where we can go next, according to the map of Sanctuary, Diablo 4, including Vessel of Hatred, has now covered pretty much all of Estuar, which is the Eastern Continent. The one piece we did not uncover however, is the lost city of Uruk, which is a small part here and Hawazar. I don't think that it's going to be highlighted in such a way on the map without us exploring it further. Maybe that'll be where the confrontation with Mephisto takes place, but Mephisto also made it clear when we confronted his herald that his two brothers were coming. This isn't an if, this is a guaranteed occurrence that is going to happen. Now those are my theories for what's next guys. I'm very curious to see what your thoughts are as well, so be sure to comment down below with your predictions as to what's 
what's next. Now beyond the story, I have been streaming the end game for Vessel of Hatred, so if you are curious or simply want to jump in and ask lore questions, feel free to hop on my stream where I cast and respond to both YouTube and Twitch. And don't forget, you're getting Twitch Diablo 4 drops for the next month. Thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoy Diablo lore videos and commentary like this, please consider subscribing and giving a like to support the channel. Thank you for watching.